In this video, I want to show you how you can use the keep filters DAX function in your Power BI reports. We're going to go through what it is and how you can use this to modify the results of your calculate function. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So keep filters is a function in Power BI that lets you modify the results of your calculate function. So as I mentioned, it's typically a function that you use in combination with the calculate or the calculate table function. So keep filters is a function that you'd use if you want Want to add filters on top of any existing filters on the data that you're showing instead of overwriting them, which is what the calculate does. And that sentence I understand can be a little bit difficult to understand. It might sound gibberish to you without an example. So let me go through an example of what it does. So here we are going to use the Northwind Traders dataset, which is the dataset that we're typically using for these kind of demos. So at the moment, we have some charts here showing the total sales across different categories and across different months, but we're going to go um, even simpler here. So we're going to go to page two here and I'm going to bring in category name and my measure here that I've created sales, which is essentially just a calculation of the, the sales by multiplying unit price and quantity in our order details table. So first of all, very easy, right? So looking at this table by itself, what it does is you have a measure that calculates all of the sales by multiplying the unit price and the quantity on a row by row basis. And what it gives us is the 1.3 million pounds here. However, in this table, because we added the category name as a column, what we've added is we've added a filter on this measure to say that, okay, now I want you to, for each row, just give me the sales for that context for that category that we've added. So for each row, there is a filter being applied to the measure saying, okay, give me sales where the category name is equals to beverages, so on and so on. Hopefully you understand that, but if you don't, the relationship is what drives this understanding or this relationship between the order details table and the categories table. So it's fairly basic here. So you have your categories connecting to the products and then connecting to the order details. So that's why we can use the category name as a filter context to our order details table because of this relationship. So adding this category here on the table adds a separate filter on top of the sales measure that we've just created. So now let's do something different. Let's create another measure but instead of getting the just the sales, we'll reuse the sales, but instead uh, we want to get the total sales for just the beverages category. So to do that is pretty simple. We're gonna create a new measure here. I'm gonna call it sales beverages, right? Then we're gonna wrap it with calculate. So we're gonna use sales as our expression. And on the filter context, we're just gonna say if the category name is beverages. So if I drag this table or this measure into the table, you'll see where the difference lies. What it does is if you pay attention to the total at the bottom here, it gives you the right value, which is beverages. So total sales for beverages is 286,000 pounds, which is exactly what you would expect. However, the interesting thing that happens is that on every single row in this table, it's the same. It's giving us the same value for the beverages. And that's because the calculate filter here that we've added in our measure overrides what is the applied filter onto this table. So instead of saying, okay, give me beverages here on the beverages line, it does. But when it gets to the second line where it looks at condiments, so although there is a condiments filter here, it ignores that and instead just looks at all of the sales and it just adds the filter for beverages, So which is why you get this repeated value. It ignores the already applied filters on that measure and instead just takes the filter context in the calculate. If you have a scenario in which you want to use or keep the filters applied to your measure, 
measures while at the same time adding another filter on top of it. This is the perfect use case scenario for the keep filters function. So let's see what the documentation says about the keep filters function. So here we have a very short description here, which is just saying that how it applies or changes how the filters are applied when you use it with the calculate or calculate table function. There are some remarks here, but if I'm being honest with you, this didn't really help me understand what keep filters function is. Uh, so I had to search on Google, but I hope that my video is gonna give you a little bit more understanding on what it is and kind of how it works, right? So instead of looking at this, I wanna show you how you would use it here and how it differs. So let's create a new measure here. We're gonna say sales keep filters beverages. We're gonna use the same syntax, calculate sales. Now, instead of just adding the beverages filter, we're gonna wrap it with the keep filters function. So category name, beverages, something like this. If you drag it in, you'll see where the difference lies. So the total still shows the right total. However, the difference is that on the row by row basis on this table, it now understands that not all of the rows are beverages. So it understands that the beverages is not condiments. So that is blank. The only place where it shows up is in the beverages row where it's already got the same filter applied. So it gives you that total, which is what you'd normally expect. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why does it matter then if the total value that I get is the same as what you would normally expect. So like when would I, or when is the right scenario in which this might be appropriate? And uh, maybe I can show you in an example so that you can understand where maybe this will be a powerful place to use. So at the moment we have the category name, the sales, the sales beverages, and the key filters version of it in the same table here. The totals are correct which is fine, but the only kind of unpredictable one is the sales beverages here with the calculate function where it doesn't have the filter, the key filter, filter context. So let's do something else here. So let's add the product name as another filter, uh, external filter on this table here. So now you can see it's returning us something a little bit interesting uh, with some interesting results is what I meant to say. So. First of all, you will see that obviously we have some sales here. We have some combinations here that doesn't exist in our, in our database. So condiments can be chai, but it's still showing us value. But why? Chai is, is not a condiment as far as I know. And it becomes a little bit more clear if you sort this by just the ones that has values in them. So as you can see, this is what's happening. So it's trying to generate the value on each of the row of that context that you've applied. So you've applied a, a category in a product, but because it doesn't and it overrides what that value is, it doesn't respect what the external filter is. It just gives you the value of the beverages for that group, even though so it's not appropriate, it's not correct value. So in this sense, it gives you the same total, but the row filter context is completely ignored by just using the calculate function. Whereas if you look at the keep filters function, you'll see that it understands that it needs to only apply the, the total or the sum of sales across all the products that are in the beverages category. It understands the row filter context. So it adds the filter beverages on top of it. And that's the only value that it shows, which is what you would expect. So if you use calculate a lot, this function or this kind of pattern might look very familiar to you. And if you use Power BI and DAX for a little while now, you might find this pattern vaguely familiar. And that's because it works very similarly with the filter function, which essentially does the same thing. So you add the filter function instead of just saying the, the filter that you want 
want to use in the calculate function and it will basically do just this. So you might have a question of what is the difference between keep filters and the filter function. And after some research, I don't think that there is a difference in them, at least in a practical sense. So sure, I've seen some blogs talking about maybe some performance or some best practices issues of using keep filters and how it's better than the filter function. But at the end of the day, if you are using it for general practice and you don't have such a large model where the performance is, you know, is going to be significant, keep filters or the filter function will always return the same result. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now understand what the keep filters function is and how you can use this to change the behavior of your calculate functions in your measures. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so as to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.